Wonderful. Well, as people still go in, we'll let them in. But Brian, let's go ahead and get started. So for anyone who doesn't know you, this is Dr. Ryan Nemec. He is our uh, chief science officer at the Via Institute on Character. Super excited for him to share a little bit more about the golden mean today. So strengths, overuse, underuse, and optimal use, a super popular topic um, in our world and looking forward to sharing it with you all today. So welcome and thank you for joining. Fantastic, thanks, Sarah. Yeah, so so wonderful to to see all of you here. Um, you know, this is a, a topic: overuse, underuse, and optimal use. That is really it captures the attention of so many different people, um, and I would say that especially that applies to practitioners. Um, uh, sometimes philosophers will critique it pretty quickly and scientists can kind of go either way with it, uh, I find, generally speaking. But the audience that really seems to cherish it and find deep impact is people that are practitioners. And by that, I mean anybody that's trying to help another person with their strengths. Again, you could be a parent, you could be a manager, you could be an educator, a coach, uh, anybody that's trying to help another person. Um, and I think that's be for a number of reasons. One is because uh, practitioners want to go further with strengths. They want to go further with helping people to understand the language of character strengths. You know, we, as we all know here, I think most of us here know that just people taking the VIA survey or the VIA use survey to learn their best qualities, that can cause a big shift for people, maybe even a paradigm shift for ourselves and for, for others. So we know that. And we know that helping people to understand the language of character strengths, just like if a person is learning a, a different language other than their native tongue, uh, it takes some practice and learning of that language, but that it's incredibly impactful. So we know that. And we know that science is saying that when we use our strengths more, there are a whole lot of benefits. Uh, and I kind of put those benefits into two big buckets, the bucket of well-being and the bucket of adversity. So we know that when we're using our character strengths, when we're understanding them more, which means that we're understanding more of who we are in a much deeper way than before. And when we help our clients and our students and our employees do that as well, uh, we're offering opportunities for enhancing well-being, which refers to building our wellness, building our physical health, building better relationships, achieving more, having a higher sense of self-efficacy, uh, having better social health, engaging more with life, finding more meaning in life. And then we also know that other bucket, adversity. When people are tapping more into their character strengths and using them more in their life, uh, they're becoming more equipped, thanks, thanks to you, the practitioner that's helping them. They're becoming more equipped to manage the stress better, to overcome relationship conflicts, to be kinder to themselves, when their inner critic is, is more harsh. So we, we know this about character strengths and these big buckets, and we're still, there's so much more to learn about everything that I'm saying so far. Um, but then when we start to get into the mix of, okay, let's go further than all of that. Let's go into how we can use our strengths too much and it causes problems. And that's the overuse of our best qualities. And then what about all those seemingly countless situations in which we don't use our strengths enough uh, that we call underuse in a particular context or situation. So, so it, it, these, these topics get people really interested because of that and because it helps us to look at problems in a different way, to look at our suffering. Every person here has so much suffering from their life, myself included. We all have had all sorts of struggles in our life, and we will have many more struggles and points of suffering. And it can be useful to label that suffering, really important to label the suffering, to diagnose it if appropriate, um, to try to understand it through that lens. But a, a, a lens that we might not have done much with is to be able to look at that suffering or those struggles, those conflicts, those stressors through the lens of strengths in balance. So what strengths might I have been overusing that might be contributing to the problem or maybe are keeping me stuck in the problem? 
what strengths could I elevate more? I'm underusing them, right? And this via language of 24 character strengths is the perfect language to be thinking about this. There, there's, I mean, I, I can be challenged on this for sure, but I can't imagine there being a better language than the 20, 24 qualities that are core to who you are, that are part of our basic identity, part of our personality, our positive personality. Can't imagine a better system for trying to understand overuse and underuse and using that as a lens uh, with these topics. So that's all to say, that's why this is a popular topic. And um, and I, the stuff that we talk about here today and that we play around with and, and learn is the stuff of a, a lifetime. You know, we, we won't get it all here. And if, and if we've come away from this meeting thinking that we've completely understood everything, then we've not understood anything because this stuff is for the rest of our lives just as character strengths is, to try to understand this stuff and, and how it plays out and all the complexities of life. Um, you know, this is what I've written many books on and, and over a hundred articles on, you know, in the scientific literature and hundreds of blog posts, a uh, thousand presentations. And I still really, and I mean this truly, I'm not trying to play the humble card here. I truly know very, very little, very little. So it's the work of a, of a lifetime. And, you know, and that's just strengths, use, and applying strengths. If we get into overuse and underuse, forget about it. Um, so whatever we get to today, you know, it's just, that, it's just scratching the surface. And I hope that all of us will just continue to dig deep as, and, and look at this further and further uh, in all sorts of ways in our own life. Maybe before I share um, some slides, let me share one example just to kind of give you, you know, whet the appetite a little bit more on overuse and underuse. Um, since we're going to kind of dive right into that, I'm not going to do a big primer on character strengths, the via classification, the via survey, and the benefits and all that. I'm just assuming you kind of are, are on that page already. And if not, then uh, feel free to reach out and we can help you get on that page and help, help you uh, with different resources and articles and so on. But to give an example, so just to show how, how this stuff applies, overuse and underuse applies to, to anything, to any difficulty we can begin to use this lens. So I'll just take something that happened today for myself. So I had a, uh, a breakfast meeting scheduled for eight in the morning and I was running late and I arrived about 15 minutes late. So just take that on the surface. So that's a, like a small problem that I, I was running late and showed up late. Uh, what character strengths? are being overused or underused? And I'll even pose that as a question. You can feel free to, to throw it in the chat. I won't be offended, don't worry, <laughs> whatever you say. So what strengths was I overused or underused? Just to, to arrive late to the, to the meeting. Okay, so thank you, Stephanie, for getting us going, self-regulation. And so we could say the underuse of self-regulation. Uh, and that, that's right, I think that's one lens uh, to be thinking about this. You know, so in other words, not I, I was not bringing forth enough self self control with and self discipline uh, with the situation. Um, another is uh, underuse of prudence, so not planning things out enough. So then, and 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 maybe Sarah and Sarah doesn't know any of this. So uh, this story. So Sarah happens to uh, ask the perfect question, um, which is, will you hang out with your kids? Because it could have been overuse of love. And it's it's kind of amazing because she literally did not know any of this. And that's exactly what happened. So I was hanging out with my kids. I was helping to get them ready for school and maybe spending a little bit too much time in that. Uh, and so we could think of that as overuse of love in that situation. So it's not saying don't use love with your kids. It's saying in that context, knowing the, the whole context of the situation that I want to care for my kids and I want to be on time, that maybe there's a balance there of using love and prudence, self-regulation together uh, in a better way. Um, but I didn't do that. I didn't plan accordingly. I didn't map it out in a prudent way. And, uh, and I allowed my love strength, which is a signature strength of mine. So uh, we're gonna be vulnerable to overusing our highest strengths, our signature strengths. Uh, so I was vulnerable, Use, overused, played that, that strength, you know, a little bit too much attentiveness. And, uh, and that brought forth the lateness. Yeah, that's one explanation. You know, that's the, the thing with overuse and underuse is that it's not like there's only one right answer uh, and it's not exactly diagnosing a situation. It's just trying to, to give us additional labels for things 
that offer sort of a, a more gentle label rather than just diagnosing everything, right? Some people might say, oh, you're late and that kind of connects with ADHD, you must have ADHD and we can kind of start to label things. Um, so instead it's like, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a, a, a more receptive a language for people to understand their problems uh, from, uh, so with employees and, and students and uh, clients and so on. Okay, so that's kind of that situation. It's interesting how it kind of, um, it gets layered a little bit. Like if we look at it just from the general lens, it's kind of an underuse of prudence or self-regulation. But then when you take it a little bit further and you understand the context more, it's like, well, yeah, but overuse of love is playing into this. And then we could maybe say, and what were you doing, Ryan? And well, maybe I was asking my kids lots of questions. So, you know, you know, to prepare them for the day a little bit more. And so then suddenly it's overuse of curiosity, right? So it's so suddenly it gets more and more complicated the more that we dig into it. Um, that's why there's, again, we want to say it's, there's not an exact right answers to this stuff. It's just, it's whatever's going to be helpful for us in trying to uh, navigate the different uh, scenarios of this thing we call life. Okay, so that's kind of maybe setting the stage a little bit for, for us. Um, and as I go through a few slides now, I want to just kind of offer some information and I want to pose some questions to everybody. Uh, we can continue to, to work the chat. Um, so thank you for already diving into that. Um, and then uh, we, we're gonna have Q&A as well. So if you have questions about this, um, feel free to, to throw them into the chat and I and Sarah will kind of monitor that. We can table some of them till more toward the end. Um, and, uh, and then we could take questions live at the end as well. Um, but we also wanna hear from examples that aren't just Ryan's, right? So we wanna hear from one another uh, if certain things that I share kind of uh, provoke uh, thoughts or insights for, for you, we want to hear from that as well. Okay. Okay. So moving beyond um, just the, the 24 character strengths, um, let me kind of offer this as another piece, um, another concept to think about with overuse and underuse is that we're pursuing the golden mean. So we're pursuing the expression of character strengths in an optimal way. So using the right, we could call it the right combination of strengths to the right degree, fitting to the right context or situation. So if I was to give uh, another example of that, if I'm at a sporting event with uh, a couple friends, we're at this uh, baseball game and rooting um, for the Cincinnati Reds and um, and maybe they're doing something rare and they're actually winning, um, we uh, would be perhaps using a lot of zest. And maybe on a one to 10 scale, maybe it's a, it's a level eight, you know, screaming and cheering very loudly and stomping our feet and doing stuff that the announcer is kind of encouraging the fans to do. And um, so kind of getting into the whole flow of that. So we might be using our, our zest uh, at an eight, and maybe we'd be using our hope strength, optimistic that they're going to win the game. Maybe it's a like level five on a one to 10 scale of hope. Um, maybe not using a whole lot of self-regulation. So maybe that's like a one on a one to 10 scale. You know, you got to still monitor our behavior a little bit, not do anything too, too silly. Um, but uh, maybe it's a one or a two or a three. Some people might be using more than that, though. Again, there's not an exact right combination. But the, all those numbers there, then we go uh, the, the next hour after the game, we're going to uh, a funeral. Uh, somebody has passed away. It's uh, maybe a distant uh, relative. And we need to dial down the zest strength. So the zest is now at a, you know, that energy level is at like a, a one or a two. Uh, and the the hope strength is, is maybe also at a two. And our self-regulation is suddenly at like a six or a seven. Um, so we could see this, depending on that context, we can move the degree of character strengths that we're using to try to find that right uh, fit uh, so that it's not an overuse or an underuse. You know, if you come at the funeral home then with all that energy from the baseball game because the Cincinnati Reds won, uh, it's going to probably seem quite inappropriate at most funerals, at least, to be exerting so much zest or so much humor maybe your humor character strength and, and probably wouldn't be the right fit. You need to dial that down a little bit and dial up your social intelligence strength, uh, which is to empathize with uh, the, the family and one another and to understand the context, um, to, to be respectful and appreciative in the, in the, in the situation. Um, 
So you can see where the strengths are kind of coming together in these very different contexts to the right degree in the right situation. So that is sort of taking uh, a little bit of a phrase from Aristotle from over 2000 years ago, who talked about a golden mean with in the virtues context. So in uh, modern day uh, positive psychology and well-being, we've uh, I myself and Via and others have uh, brought this um, to the strengths world. Uh, and that's what we talk about then is the golden mean of character strengths. Again, no right exact recipe, mathematical formula for this, but it's always something we can move toward pursuing that mindful character strengths use or that optimal strengths use. So let me offer you another lens for thinking about this then with specifically with character strengths. So to pursue that golden mean or optimal strengths use, um, we can think about each of the character strengths on a continuum of too much and too little. And what we found so far is that you can overuse any of the character strengths and you can underuse any of the character strengths. Uh, and it's gonna depend very much on the situation that you're in uh, and so on. Uh, so we can kind of start to map this out and give some examples, further examples of that overuse and underuse. So for example, if we take curiosity, uh, too much curiosity might look like we're being nosy, maybe we're asking too many questions and we're intruding upon the other person uh, and might appear to be self-serving. Uh, but if we're not using much curiosity, disinterested, bored, apathetic, and so on. So we pursue more of a, an optimal use in that particular situation, uh, which might be described as being an explorer, you know, pursuing novelty, uh, being open to possibilities, being intrigued. So this golden mean uh, can be mapped on any of the 24 strengths. Um, and we have a handout on this. I'll show you a picture of it in a moment, but, um, and, and Sarah, if you um, wouldn't mind uh, finding the link uh, on the VIA site for the handout, the one page handout of the golden mean, I think um, some people that haven't seen it would really actually love it. Um, now, as we think about curiosity and well, so what do we do about this? There's lots of ways to think about, well, how do we handle overuse and underuse? And we're going to tap into this a little bit. We want to tap into the wisdom of the group as well. Um, but we can also, you know, one starting point might be to look to what are the character strengths that are most highly connected or correlated with the golden mean, or I mean, with that particular character strength. Um, and that can offer some initial clues, not the answer and not an, a precise intervention, precise activity, but some initial clues. Um, so perhaps uh, using these strengths that are most highly connected with curiosity. So we know uh, from some research that it's zest and love of learning creativity in particular. Um, so perhaps using the lens of zest to be able to manage the curiosity or to uplift it, love of learning or creativity. So that can be kind of one lens. Now, let me show you another example, one that we often don't think of, you know, kindness, where we could think, well, Kindness is just only good, right? You know, there's no upper limit to kindness. Um, but for most positive phenomena, if not all positive phenomena, there's an upper limit. There's a too much. Um, and research has found that over and over again. There's a too much to our positive emotions. There's a too much to um, uh, to uh, setting, setting goals. Uh, there's a too much to pursuing, you know, multiple virtues at the same time. Um, I suppose we could make the argument, I don't know about research, but we could make the argument for there's too much for mindfulness, maybe being too hyper-focused on uh, the present moment. Um, and it's not always the right fit in every situation. Um, so again, all 24 work that way. Um, so kindness, as wonderful as kindness is and as important as it is, and, and my goodness, do we need more of that in today's world? Um, it, it still can have an upper limit. And you can see very clearly that um, that too much kindness can lead to what some sometimes is talked about in a lot of uh, practitioner contexts of con compassion fatigue, that the, the practitioner is always giving to others and overly focused on others, and maybe is not caring enough for themselves. Um, and that can be expressed very, that is expressed very clearly in my mind um, uh, by seeing how popular in the last 10, 12 years now, um, self-compassion uh, programs and self-compassion research has become uh, going from almost no studies. And then Kristen Neff publishes a couple um, articles in 2003 on uh, the self-compassion scale. And then a few years later, now there's 
you know, I don't know, a thousand studies, whatever it is. There's just so much on self-compassion and, and then branching that out to self, self-forgiveness and uh, self-kindness and something that we're interested in at VIA and starting to study is self-gentleness. Um, so all sorts of ways that can be expanded and thought about, but, um, but that can be too much, an overuse of kindness uh, for ourselves. Uh, and then the underuse of kindness is, is probably quite obvious. You know, kindness, you know, is, is you could see in the middle here, there's, there's so many different dimensions to it. You know, and the, the, so the VIA survey, which you've all taken to measure your 24 strengths, is just four questions per strength. So it can't possibly get at every dimension of every strength. Um, so sometimes we have to just understand the concepts. And when we're working with somebody, we can broaden it a little bit. Uh, and that's the case with kindness, because look at how all these different flavors of kindness, you know, there's also altruism, you know, there's uh, being nice and friendly, there's being compassionate, uh, there's just kind of trying to be a, a good person to others. Um, there's being a, a generous person, generous with our time, generous with our money, gener generous with our talents. So, so many different flavors to and pieces of kindness. And uh, I've not seen a study that does this, but we, you could certainly drill down on each of these. You know, some of us here, like, like let's say if everybody here was high in kindness, and that is one of the more common strengths around the world for people to be high in. So, it uh, maybe maybe it's fairly true for for us here and listening. Um, it doesn't mean that we're all generous people. Maybe we're high in the nice and friendly type of kindness, or maybe we're fairly altruistic, or maybe we're caring uh, for for older people, or caring for younger people, or care, caring for people with disabilities. And our kindness is very context specific. Um, some of us are very generally kind. You know that would be what the VIA survey attempts to measure is 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 it kind of broad um, across situations. Um, uh, so lots of different pieces and parts to this. Um, and all that is fodder for as we think about overuse and underuse of character strengths uh, as we look at these dimensions. And then these are the strengths most connected with kindness. So perhaps they give us some clues on how to work with kindness if we were wondering or questioning what to do. Maybe it's turning to our gratitude, our teamwork, or our leadership. Now, here's the handout, and I saw Sarah put it in the chat. Thanks, Sarah. So um, this is a part of a screenshot of it. So we have a, a nice one pager that you could print up and use in your um, your practitioner settings or or in your family setting, putting it on your fridge uh, or other places, having it in, the, in notebooks and places you go. But uh, as a way of kind of learning the language in an expanded way. You know, so this VIA work is about learning a, a new language, as I mentioned, the 24 character strengths, and that's part of that paradigm shift. Um, but then learning the new language is also some of this in the middle, it's learning those different dimensions and the synonyms of what these words are, and maybe learning some of those strengths that correlate uh, highly with that particular strength to give us clues on how to work with them. But then it also extends to overuse and underuse. So suddenly something that was fairly straightforward, the 24 strengths and the virtue categories that they nest under, now suddenly uh, there's multiple layers um, to help us, uh, again, better understand ourselves and better understand others. So ultimately, um, you know, we want to get to uh, what do we do about some of this? You know, what do we do about overuse and underuse and how do we take action? Um, and so some suggestions that I would, uh, one suggestion I would have is you can do an activity such as this, where you choose any character strength, uh, and then you look to the stories uh, of how you underuse it, overuse it, and, and, and optimally use it. So this is one lens. Going right after the character strength you're trying to understand. Now, a very different one, and I'll share more about this later, is is taking the lens of from a flip side of what problem are you having and then look to overuse and underuse. See what I mean? So it's two very, very different approaches. And some of you here will really resonate with what's on the screen. Um, yeah, let me just kind of explore this particular strength. But others will want to go at it from the, from the problem perspective. And they're both very, I think, helpful and useful uh, for us to be thinking about this work. And so let me just um, go into that for a moment here. Um, so th this is the the flip side. So so you could take any problem or conflict, any stressor, uh, and ask yourself, what character strength might I be overusing? 
what character strength might I be underusing? Or you can observe that, gosh, my words or my actions, my thoughts, my feelings are having a negative impact on myself or I'm perceiving that they're having an impact on others. And so therefore I must be overusing or underusing something. And so then that provokes those two questions there. So this is a way to kind of drill right into overuse and underuse. And you can see one takes this takes the starting point, the strength, and you explore it that way. And the other says, let's start with a particular problem uh, and explore it that way. So so both can be very useful, um, uh, but uh, not not any particular one right way. So let me pause there, and uh, I want to uh, turn to to you all. Uh, with a, a first, just an initial question to kind of um, whet the appetite a little bit. So as you've ex thought about this a little bit, some of you I know have thought about this a lot. Um, so whether you thought about it a little or a lot, it doesn't matter. You can all feel free to share in the chat. What do you perceive to be most challenging for you of the following four choices? Overusing a signature strength or overusing a lower strength, or underusing a signature strength, or underusing a lower strength. So those kind of four choices, I'm curious if we were kind of almost, we didn't put it in a particular poll, I don't think, but um, but just, uh, yeah, you could just chat chat, chat it again. Well, you know, in other words, what, say it again, what's, what's most challenging for you as you start to think about this work? What might be kind of really rich to start to explore further? The overuse of one of your highest strengths, the overuse of one of your lowest strengths, or the underuse of one of your highest strengths, the underuse of one of your lowest strengths. Okay, so the challenges so far, we're seeing uh, overusing a lower, underusing a lower, underusing a lower, underusing a signature strength, underusing lower, overusing signature strengths, underusing higher. Fairly good mix. So cer certainly a, a, a waiting, waiting, like an emphasis further on underuse of, of either one. Of course, any of them can be growth areas for us. You know, it's um, there's early some early research showing that it, it's probably more likely that we're going to overuse a signature strength. Um, like in the example I gave about myself, you know, we care so much about that signature strength um, and we're vulnerable to overplaying it. Um, and partly we maybe don't always understand how strong we express our signature strengths, right? You know, it's just, it's so natural and so much a part of us that we're just blasting forward in life. Um, so we can be vulnerable to that. You know, in addition to love, my highest of high signature strengths are also hope and, and honesty. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I can overuse my honesty quite a bit and even know that I'm overusing it and do it anyway. So for example, my wife calls me the confessor <laughs> uh, because I will, if somebody asks me a question, and so you can challenge me on this, ask me a question, uh, and I will sometimes say too much. Like they might ask me a personal question and I don't have any problem sharing personal problems and struggles. I know some people that's really difficult to do. Um, I think I just learned just as a psychologist, I can listen to everybody else's problems, very deep, dark secrets. So I'm just gonna be comfortable sharing mine. Not that I'm not gonna share some, not that I'm going to share all my deep, dark secrets, but I, I'm very comfortable sharing that kind of thing. Um, but it's it's not always wise <laughs> to do that in every situation. So my wife calls me the confessor, you know, because I will almost share, share on anything. Um, so then it requires me to use another one of my signature strengths. It's a little bit lower than the others, but still a strength of social intelligence. Um, and to intentionally elevate my social intelligence of the situation and say, Ryan, give more priority to social intelligence than honesty in this situation. It doesn't mean be dishonest, 
but have some guardrails around your your honesty a little bit um, uh, in in some situations, certain situations. So so it's a way of kind of working the two strengths together, uh, maybe fairly equally, uh, rather than just giving priority to the to the highest of high strengths. Brian, can I call out a question real quick? Sure. Yes. Awesome. Um, so in the chat, someone has asked about signature strengths developed as corrective coping skills. Is there any research on that or how might you uh, tie the two together? Well, maybe the person could share a little bit more about what they mean by corrective coping skills. So, you know, my first inclination would be to say there isn't specific research on exactly um, that I mean, there's 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 research showing the support of character strengths as coping skills uh, for you know for stress and for different problems, but corrective um, would need maybe a little bit more explanation. Okay, thank you. If, if that person's welcome to define that, or or we could even uh, unmute if they want to. All right, Anna, we'll wait to hear from you if you uh, want to share a little bit more. And I think I saw another question in there somewhere. Everyone was talking about their over and under uses, which is which is what we want to be thinking about this in, in lots of different ways. So I, I would wonder, does anyone want to share a a, a small struggle that they have? Uh, and then how they can start to think about that uh, from an overuse lens and an uh, underuse lens. As we think about that, and, and maybe if you're going to share something, I um, the, here's kind of a couple other uh, tips or ways to think about this is that we we want to always start with ourselves with this work. Uh, it has a it it can really lend itself nicely to blaming. <laughs> you know, and pointing the finger at other people and see, this is why this person's so difficult or a problem. Um, and there might be some truth to that. It might give you another lens about difficult people for sure. Uh, but it's always wiser to start with ourselves. And that's the, of course, the, the person that we can have some change with and that we can possibly impact that change on ourselves so, and to just understand overuse, underuse better. Um, so we always wanna start with ourselves um, and then also start small. So rather than looking to uh, a big trauma in our life or a, a horrifying tragedy, uh, yeah. but instead to look at some small things that happen in everyday life. Again, the example that I gave of, of being late uh, is fairly minor depending on the situation um, and start to understand ourselves through that uh, minor difficulty lens. So um, happy to see if anyone would like to, um, to share that. And again, you can open up your line, raise your hand, open up your line, or you could share it in the chat. No takers just yet. Might be tight. Oh, Ryan. Okay, great. Welcome. Hey, Karen. Actually, I could, hi everyone. I could actually use some help um, identifying what I'm overusing when I worry. Is that prudence? Hmm. Uh, oh, worrying. So when you're worrying. When you're worrying uh, Is in, that an overuse of prudence? It certainly could be. I mean, <laughs> do you want to share any more about the worrying? Because it could depend on the, the, the content of the worry. It could be the situation, you know. Um, well, it's not quite it, catastrophic thinking, but it's, you know, if we see a downturn in business, mm, uh, mm -hmm. then I might worry about, you know, what that would look like in three to four months and start preparing for something, which feels to me like prudence, but it feels like it's kind of on overdrive. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, excellent scenario. Thanks for sharing that, Karen. Let's 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 hear from the group. Um, and and Shannon uh, offers an immediate thought of underuse of hope. Is that you know as a question? You know, not again. It's not a diagnosis. It's a it's a question like uh, something to explore as you reflect and as you journal and and meditate. Stephanie offers judgment. Um, and uh, for that, yes, I was wondering: is there any overuse of judgment, like an overuse of uh, the the critical thinking? 
as you reflecting on on things. Yeah, those are those are two two dynamics. And and again, Karen shares worry, which every person on this call has has worries. Uh, and some of us might play into it a whole lot more than others, um, or maybe we're all fairly equal with it. But regardless, it, it could be, it could the strength combinations and overuse and underuse could be different for different people. Um, so that's why I was inviting Karen to just kind of reflect uh, on these uh, each of these, and that would be the same for for under, all of us. Underuse of perspective, underuse of self regulation, are some other thoughts. Yeah, this is a great crowdsourcing. We, we 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 can all maybe that's the thing. We'll do another one of these webinars, and everyone brings a problem, and then we crowdsource it with overuse underuse, uh, and all things are equal because we're all sharing a problem. Um, yeah, so feel free to to keep those coming, everybody. Um, let me ask you um, all another question before I go to another slide. Um, is there a context that? you feel your strengths are most in, in, a, in an imbalanced way. So that's so not balanced. Um, uh, and, and I'll give you three, three possible contexts and they're very broad, of course. Uh, workplace or school is one. Personal relationships or your own life goals. Which of those do you think you, you might have your strengths are most out of balance? Workplace or school, relationships or life goals. And uh, let's let's take a look at what comes up for you. So Cassandra says uh, life goals is maybe the the biggest vulnerable point in terms of those contest context examples. For Lynn, it's workplace, Stephanie, uh, life goals, and Hazel as well. Life goals again, workplace, life goals, life goals. Okay, so a number of uh, focused on, on life goals in terms of the strengths imbalance. Uh, well, actually, you know what? Let me stop my sharing. I want to actually share with you some of the research on this. I need to open up a different window here because it's research is so new, I don't have it actually memorized yet. Um, so I'm going to come back to this a slide on the golden mean inventory um, in a moment. But uh, in that, in a study that um, we did at VIA with uh, over 10,000 people from around the world, uh, we were looking at overuse and underuse and optimal use. And uh, looking at them across different contexts. And again, generally speaking, there's so many findings on this, but generally speaking, the context that was uh, the strengths were most optimally used, again, across across the board, so just this is very general on, on average, was uh, the workplace. And I noticed workplace did not come up, I don't think, in the chat. So, the, so people were perceiving that out of those contexts, work was, the, was where they were bringing their strengths optimally the most. Uh, the context where the most overuse was, uh, was relationships. So overplaying certain strengths in one's uh, intimate relationships. Uh, and then the most underused was personal goals. So people perhaps feeling um, that they could bring forth more of their, I'm uh, making this up, but perseverance and, and their self-regulation and their hope and so on. And actually, I, I could look that up, actually, what the specific strengths were, but uh, but generally speaking, underusing for personal goals. Um, now, let me say a little bit about, um, give, give the, actually, let me have you guess. So when we look at um, what strengths do you think are most commonly overused? Again, if we just look across context, we could look in life goals, we could look at work, we could look, and we have all that, but just generally speaking, uh, maybe throw in the chat what you think. What strengths do you think do you think are most overused of the twenty four by people's perception? Most overplayed. They're bringing them forth too strongly. Okay, so I'm seeing humor, love of learning, honesty, curiosity, self regulation. Okay, looks like you guys got one of them. So the number one by far judgment. So the overplay of judgment and that kind of tendency toward um, potentially critical, to being too critical of, of oneself, bringing that forth too strongly. 
um, our inner critic, so to speak. Uh, honesty, prudence, and curiosity were the other eight. Uh, kind of, again, generally speaking, on average, most overused. Um, now take a guess on what strengths do you think people are, are most underusing? Most likely to be underusing. Humor, leadership, zest, hope, self-regulation. A couple of people saying self-regulation. It was self-regulation as one of them. Uh, also bravery, as Nautica just noted there. Uh, zest and spirituality round out the top four. Uh, in terms of people's perception of their optimal use across the board, the, the most common uh, on average, fairness, humility, kindness, and teamwork were most, most perceived to be optimally used. Okay, let me go back to my slides. I want to be able to uh, help us close off uh, on this. Let me see. Okay, so so this was the, what I was just reporting from was a new study that we did. It's uh, hopefully going to be published very soon. Uh, it's in the kind of the last stages, we hope, of a journal um, where we were testing the golden mean inventory, which looks like what you see in the screen here, where for the first time ever, we're exploring character strengths across contexts. Because overuse and underuse gets so complicated, um, it, we can best understand it through context. And I know I was just violating that by by kind of offering you examples, uh, generally speaking. Um, but uh, in terms of really understanding ourselves, uh, we want to look at it like this. And we want to look at it on a dimensional level. So uh, from Likert scale from one to nine. Um, and uh, you could see the the framing for it and we where we provide a, a, a core definition of the strength uh, in a simple way for people to immediately relate to and then explore it in the context. So this is what the study um was was doing across the 24 character strengths and across these contexts um and uh and then there's multiple scoring approaches we'll have this available on the via site um uh eventually uh for researchers and practitioners and and maybe for the general public as well um but uh, but a host of of insights and, and a host of ways to score this we could score this by the context, what strengths you personally or your clients most likely to be overusing, underusing in this context or that context uh, overall, or um, when are you just uh, balanced versus imbalance? So kind of collapsing overuse and underuse together as, as imbalance versus balance, which is the optimal use. So that's yet another way to score this and to examine this. So kind of really exciting. Um, and we already are, are in the middle of about four or five other studies on this. So I think this is going to be um, a big part of the future for VIA and for character strengths work. Uh, and we we hope to be able to have some uh, a lot of different resources on this as well. Um, now that does come back to, to you all, um, is there is one way you can contribute? Uh, if you like, is we are running a golden mean inventory study for coaches. Um, so we're specifically studying coaches uh, in which I won't go into too much detail, but essentially it's the coach using the golden mean inventory with a client or two um, and then being interviewed by the researchers. Uh, I'm part of the team, but I won't be doing the interviews. Um, interviewed by the researcher on your, on your experiences. So basically use the inventory and then give us your insights and feedbacks, and then it would be analyzed in terms of the insights. Um, now we have, we've recruited, we can only recruit so many people and we've recruited a lot for it. And we're looking at coaches that have more, have a variety of experiences. So more than 10 years, but also very, you know, maybe one or two years and uh, perhaps in the, in between two and 10 as well. Um, so it's kind of different groups that we're looking at uh, in terms of experience level. Uh, if you are interested in participating, and you will be paid, by the way, uh, not a lot, but it's actually remarkable that you can be paid anything, because usually there's no payment for studies like this. You get $100. Um, uh, and I think a free report from VIA, which is a $50 value, so it's really like $150. Um, and uh, so this is the contact person. This is... Um, uh, the 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 researcher the research assistant that's working with us uh, Tamar Lieberman so you can see her email there so please um pl please reach out and um, reach out soon because we might hit the maximum uh, at some point so uh, she'll let you know if um, you can be admitted in that study if you're interested um, so uh, maybe we can we can pause there um, I know that we've just scratched the surface I I hope that we're you're 
at least uh, your curiosity is peaked on overuse and underuse and optimal use. And you're thinking about it in ways to apply to yourself first and then start to bring it to others and really looking at it as another lens for dealing with conflicts and problems. Uh, and feel free to reach out to us if you want more webinars like this on overuse and underuse, and we can take different angles and break people into small groups and discussion. We can we could take this work further. So reach out to us. And I my sense is we'll probably have another one like this when we formally launch the Golden Mean Inventory. So as you can stay tuned to that for sure. But for now, I want to hand it back to Sarah, um, who wants to share uh, one more thing here. There we go. I don't know if this, or you want to share your own slide, Sarah? Is that no, this is perfect. This is perfect. So also just, um, I did want to come back around to a question, but before we come back into that, uh, we just wanted to share with everyone one of our um, newest tools, uh, Viana, who is your AI strengths coach for well-being. So if you know your character strengths, but you're looking for additional ways to use them, um, check out Viana. It is such a fun tool powered by your character strengths, your unique um, qualities about you. So you can ask questions. Um, you can have an ongoing conversation really about any topic um, that is coming to you that you need an additional help with. Um, so QR code is down in the corner. You can get out your phone, go to your camera app, and it should take you directly to the link. Um, but just in case, I will drop it in the chat. Um, it is $1 for your first month. Um, so even if you're curious, could be worth it just to take a peek. Awesome. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, I, you know, there's, I'm, we're seeing AI pop up more and more. It seems like we're, you know, I join anything new. There's an AI option in the upper left corner, or hey, do this AI, and it kind of pops up, and various coaches and other professionals are weaving it in. Um, but what we could say is they don't have the character strengths uh, in this way, you know, because there's, there's, you know, the Viana is loaded, you know, like I mean that literally, like has it has itself loaded with. Um, various character strengths materials that others don't have access to. Um, so that's what makes Viana an even stronger coach because it's the character strengths coach. It can actually work with your best qualities uh, uh, in an optimal coaching way. So um, that's what makes Viana quite special. And we're working on um, Viana as an assistant um, as well. So it, it can not only just help you coach or, or help you uh, as a coach, uh, but we're we're working on a coach or a practitioner assistant uh, that will launch when it, that's very soon, Sarah. I think it's next month, maybe, uh, mm -hmm. where you can imagine having Viana kind of next to you, almost like a a, a, a co coach um, that can help um, uh, help you with different insights and different things. So that's coming soon. And also Viana as an organizational development um, coach and or assistant, um, uh, Viana as a as a sport coach, um, in terms of uh, uh, kind of working with the athlete. The system, the um, the parent and the and the the, the sport coach all together uh, as a system. So a lot of different uses of Vienna that are emerging. Um, so it's very exciting. You know, AI is one of these things that whether we like it or not, it's here. Um, so why not? I think Via's perspective. Why not really try to be doing good with it? We know a lot of bad can happen uh, with a with AI. Uh, why not be some of the leaders on doing the good with it? Um, and helping it to enhance uh, what we're already doing. Um, so that's kind of some of the perspective and um, which makes it nice and exciting. And Sarah, you said there was one more question. I know we're a little over time. I don't mind staying over a little bit. Uh, and I know um, uh, others have decided to stay as well. You can log off at any time, obviously, but happy to take a couple more minutes for final questions uh, if anyone likes. Yeah, I just wanted to follow up on Anna's question about um, coping, uh, correcting corrective coping strategies. And she provided a little bit more context. And um, her example was kindness. If someone has attachment issues and tries to bond in this way. So uh, maybe this is kind of, uh, I don't know how to use the word negative, but it could be that negative side of um, overuse. Um, but any additional thoughts around um, your signature strengths being used as a corrective coping skill with the example being kindness and using that um, as a way to bond. Um, hopefully that will, hopefully that makes sense. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I still, sorry, I'm still not following the example exactly. Um, you know, I, I, but just, just to talk a little bit about that, that topic. You know, these, these character strengths are so, I mean, I guess known to some degree, but maybe people not seeing the power that they have with that's within them uh, to be able to, to deepen connections. So when we think, I mean, these character strengths of love and kindness and social intelligence and forgiveness and fairness, those are all just very deep bonding agents that really should be given their 100% full due in terms of giving the attention to their to their use. Um, so kind of another caution that I sometimes give, and I'm not saying this is from Anna's example, just it's just something that, that strikes me that I sometimes share with people is, is we, we, we always want to pursue use and, and pr pursue understanding about our, char our, our character strengths use before trying to understand overuse and underuse. Um, so a, a first step is definitely looking at ourselves and how am I using my love well, right? Not perfectly, but how am I doing well with my love? How am I doing well with kindness and social intelligence? Because people will, I, I can think of many examples, people will quickly jump to overuse and start to problematize uh, themselves. And and they'll get in their head perfectionistically, like, oh, this isn't perfect because it's overuse and this isn't perfect because it's underuse and I screwed that up again. So we can get very deficit-based with overuse and underuse, which is the danger of it, the risk of it. Not that it's a horrifying danger, but it's it's just, it's moving maybe in the wrong direction. You know, we want it to help us to have a different perception of things and to have a gentle way to understand ourselves uh, as opposed to a, a new form of attacking ourselves. And if any of us here are good at attacking ourselves, I promise you, you'll, you'll find a way to do it with overuse and underuse because it's not hard to do. Um, so then the caution then, so I'm really grateful, I'm at least saying this out loud um, and, and in the recording, uh, the, the key is understand your, your, understand your character strengths use first and deeply get that. So if you're if you're finding yourself in this call to say, I wanna really explore my overuse of prudence, then to please first write down 100 examples of how you use prudence effectively. And I truly mean 100. You will be able to come up with 100 ways, small ways and big ways that you've used prudence effectively. And that will be much more beneficial to you than just exploring your overuse of prudence. And again, apply that to any of the strengths. So that's the counter, that's, that's, we do that first, use first, then we, we, we feel a, a sufficient depth with use, then we're ready to go into exploring overuse and underuse and that kind of thing. So that would be some suggestions. Awesome. Thank you, Ryan. We are, everyone is so appreciative. Um, uh, lots of excitement in the chat around the topic. Um, and I will just note, we are about two minutes till noon. Uh, here on the East Coast. So um, just wanted to give a moment for a final wrap up. Uh, Ryan, do you have any other comments before we sign off for the day? Uh, I, I, I like ending at that last comment of use before overuse, underuse as the general guiding principle. Um, but I do see in the chat, uh, I do like the comment from, and again, I, I apologize, I've not read everybody's, um, uh, but I just happen to notice B. Fuller's comment. Uh, often when we overuse certain strengths like kindness, love, self-regulation, perseverance, we're actually losing energy instead of increasing our energy. So I think that's another great insight when we're trying to understand ourselves through these lenses is, is if we're finding ourselves losing energy during the day, um, yes, there's lots of things we can do. We can do a flow audit and we can check you know, what we're putting in our body, eating, and uh, we exercising enough. And I mean, there's all sorts of great wisdom already. Uh, in terms of energy, uh, but then also we can look psychologically. Am I overplaying my judgment? Is my judgment going rampant in, in analyzing everything? Is my perseverance going rampant because I'm pushing myself, pushing myself, and I actually just need to take an inhale and an exhale and not persevere on this. I'm not a bad person for pausing in my perseverance, you know, or being too disciplined about everything or too curious or whatever, too kind to everybody and never being kind to yourself. So the overuse and underuse of energy is another beautiful frame that we didn't mention. So I just wanted to, to bring that comment to light as well. So thanks for bringing that up, B. Fuller. And thanks. And I just want to thank you, Sarah, for not only your uh, very perceptive uh, insight uh, at the beginning, but also for helping to manage this uh, so well and to make it a, a wonderful experience here, um, you know, for, for everybody and for Via.
Of course. Yes. It's so great to see everyone from around the globe and uh, stay connected with us. We will be hosting more webinars, featuring more things that Ryan is doing, research and, you know, everything in between. Um, so, so excited to have you all here today and uh, we'll stay connected. Bye, everybody.